Hello everyone. Okay, I'm gonna get started. The Sunday school lesson. Um the first the last first Sunday in um 2021, December 5th. And the title of our lesson is Sor Sorrow Before Triumph. We have three outlines for this lesson. A momentous announcement. That's Matthews 1, 18 through 21. We have an extraordinary devotion. That's John 12, 1 through 3. And a duplicitous objection. And that's John 12, 4 through 8. I'm going to um, read the introduction and get started but first let me read the golden text the golden text reads verily i say unto you wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world there shall there shall also this that this woman what this woman hath done be told for a memorial of her and that's matthew 26 through 13 once we get this is the introduction once we get to december it seems that christmas had has already arrived at least from the standpoint of the commercial world in many congregations december's arrival heralds the beginning of the advent season a time for focusing on the events related to christ's birth special programs begin to take shape not all congregations are inclined however as was true with the puritans in early america some churches feel that such celebrations are unscriptural and have no place in the regular worship of believers. But this is a this is a, a minority view today, with most congregations seizing the opportunity to place special emphasis on Christ's birth. Since both Matthew and Luke provided significant information concerning, concerning the Messiah's arrival, it is appropriate that we likewise emphasize this world-changing event. I'm going to whisper a word of prayer and get into the lesson. Thank you, God, for this day, Lord God. Thank you for letting us see another day which we've never seen before and a day which we will never see again. I pray that we make the best of this day to bring glory to your name, Lord God. I pray that this lesson touches each and every one of us who listens and that we get a great understanding of what it is, God, you're saying to us. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable, Lord, in thy sight. You are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, three outlines. So the first outline is a momentous announcement. That's Matthew um, 1, 18 through 21. And we're going to, you know, of course, we know the story about um, Mary being um, with child, of course, without um the help of her husband and we're gonna see how um her husband being a a, a true man an awesome man didn't want to um put her away you know make a spectacle out of her but um he you know decided what he wanted to do was to put, do it do it privately um i'm gonna read the first um 18 through 21 and which is the momentous announcement now the birth of jesus christ was on this wise when as his mother mary was espoused to joseph before they came together she was found with child of the holy ghost then joseph her husband being a just man and not willing to make her a public example was minded to put her away privately but while he thought on these things behold the angel of the lord appeared unto him in a dream saying joseph thou son of david fear not to take unto thee mary thy wife for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And as we um, see um, how Joseph, with Joseph, I'm going to read a little bit from the expositor. You know how Joseph, being a just man, he was, he was a good man, he was a just man, and he didn't want to, you know, like some of us can't wait to find out um, what someone has done or wronged us and we want to get back at them, but that's just not the godly way to do it. We need to take the right approach when it comes to um, things that we feel offend us. And of course, something like this could have offended Joseph, but he didn't um, want to embarrass her. You know, he loved her. And, you know, and they being espoused meant that they were engaged. Um... The narrative begins by telling us that Joseph and Mary were promised in, in marriage to each other. That's when we talked about 
them being espoused. They were promised in marriage to each other. While today we might use the words betrothed or engaged, but that's what what it was, that's what it meant, um, which describes, which accurately describes their relationship. At some point, it was discovered um, that Mary was with child, and the conception had come about by the power of the Holy Spirit. In both Matthew's and Luke's account of the birth of Christ, there is no doubt that Mary was a virgin um, at both the time of conception and at, at the time of Jesus' birth. While some have promoted the, the concept of perpetual virginity, scripture, scriptural evidence suggests that after Jesus' birth, Joseph and Mary had a normal marital relationship and produced children. But before um, her and Joseph came together, she was... Um, she was a virgin so she was the virgin mary so here we're going to see um that was the um the announcement but here we got joseph has a dilemma so since he was a godly man and he did not wish to be married to a woman who had presumed presume you know presumably been unfaithful to him with another man doing their betrothal their engagement nor did he wish to disgrace her um disgrace Mary public, publicly or have her punished for her assumed unfaithfulness because you know he could have had her punished for being unfaithful but he didn't wish to do that rather he you know he was minded to put her away privately it just goes to show the man the man that he is the man of God that he is now note um that Joseph is referred to here as Mary's husband because they were considered reflecting um what was stated earlier concerning the binding nature of espousal, so they, it said Mary's husband. Rather than making a hasty decision about his future with Mary, Joseph thought on these things. He mulled them over in his mind. He thought on these things before he made her, you know. Sometimes, before we make that rash decision, we need to think things over in our mind before we do the wrong thing. Um, like Joseph was doing what he was doing in love, and that's what we need to learn how to do is to do things in love rather than um you know making a spectacle of her you know and when we know that no doubt he had you know his his emotions involved of course you know his emotions should have been involved but um everything you know from anger to sorrow i'm sure all of those built up in him but still he he, he molded over in his mind as to what he was going to do so exactly how we don't know how he found out about mary being um pregnant it's not stated, but probably, probably, possibly she told him herself. Um, perhaps sharing the details of how the you know angel Gabriel had appeared to her, that might have been something hard for him to um, understand. So she, you know, probably told him. But Mary's story would almost certainly be have been impossible for him to believe. But it was while um, he was considering the, the dilemma, he found himself the, that he found himself in. An angel of the Lord appeared to him, encouraging him not to be afraid to marry Mary. So, you know, now the birth of Jesus was on this wise. So, it was saying when the birth of Jesus, this is, this is what happened. Okay. When his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, that means before they had relations, they came together, they were engaged. But then Mary was found with a child. She was pregnant. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, being a good man, a godly man, not willing to um, disgrace her or make a public example of her, he decided to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, that's why I said be careful, slow, slow, um, slow to react when we feel we're offended or we feel someone has hurt us. Be slow to react because good can come out of that. You know, when you act out, you know, quickly, rashly, it's not a good thing. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Okay, so he just um, confirmed Mary being pregnant. So the angel of the Lord came to Joseph and confirmed Mary being pregnant. And um, so Joseph then immediately took Mary as his wife. And it was soon after that that both departed for Bethlehem, where Jesus was actually born, thus fulfilling the prophecy. So we know that jesus came um to earth um for the simple purpose of um dying for the sins of the of the whole world so i'm going to read a little bit here with the christmas on the horizon excitement 
for the anticipated celebration is increasing daily. The occasion is one that will be observed in some fashion by those who do not even know about the birth of, about the birth of Christ. Many Christians, you know, um, lament over this commercialized um, holiday and the fact that is it um, and the fact that it's real meaning means little or nothing to so many and it does it means you know it's not even about christ you know many people don't even recognize christ's birth during the christmas time um the challenge for believers especially those who live in an affluent society is to keep christ centered in in the christmas celebration we must keep christ centered in the christmas celebration as saying goes, Jesus is the reason for the season. So let's keep, it's like my shirt says, Jesus is the reason for the season. Um, let's keep that in mind while we go through this, um, this Christmas season, knowing that he was the perfect gift. So as we think of gifts given, and that's what makes Christmas just such a special time, because we think of, you know, Christmas is a time where it's a lot of giving and a lot of love and a lot of sharing and a lot of, you know, you know, good things that happen. And that's why I love it because we recognize that Jesus gave the perfect gift. God gave the perfect gift. God gave us Jesus. He gave us the perfect gift. Gift. As we begin a new quarter of study in Jesus' precious word, we will be considering the triumphal arrival of the Savior who was given to the world by his heavenly Father in the fullness of the time. Jesus came as a gift to the world and all who receive him in repentant faith and also receive the gift he came to give, which is eternal life. And that's what it takes to receive eternal life, is to accept the gift that God has given us, which is his son. So now we have the sacrifice of Mary for Christ, um, being able to pay the price, um, I'm sorry, for Christ to be able to pay the price for the sin of humanity, he had to become a human, okay? So without giving up his deity, so Christ had to become a human without giving up his deity. So to become the, and that was to become the God man. It was necessary that he be conceived by God, the Holy Spirit in the womb. Because, you know, um, when Adam and Eve sinned, you know, the bloodline was contaminated. So only a perfect man could die for sin. So that's why God became a man in the person of Jesus Christ to die for the sins of the world. So God um, gave us the, the best gift, the most precious gift, which is his son. The Holy Spirit um, in the womb of a woman. To that end, a young virgin of the town of Nazareth was, was divinely chosen. Mary was divinely chosen. The young lady that God chose to be the mother of our Lord was espoused to be married. She would, she would need to give her life solely to God and sacrifice any hopes and dreams she might have had in order to fulfill his will for her life. And that's something that, that um, we need to think about in order for, you know, what well, we need to give up to... Um, to be able to sacrifice and to give up some things to fulfill the will that God has for our lives. Um, so now I'm going to go to, I'm going to move on and I'm going to go to the second outline, <clears throat> which is extraordinary devotion. And that's, we're going to, now we're coming into um, John, the 12th chapter. Um, and this is verses 1 through 3. Then Jesus, six days um, before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus, um, Lazarus, Lazarus was which um, had, been, had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. There they made a supper. I'm sorry. There they made him a supper. They made Jesus a supper. And Mary and Martha served. But Lazarus, Lazarus, Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with, with Jesus. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. And so now we're going to move on to the, um, the second outline, which is the sacrifice of Mary. So as we get to um, the dinner with Jesus, we're going to fast forward to... Um, about 30 years to a time when Jesus has, has grown into adulthood and was near and was nearing his death. Six days before the Passover, Jesus arrived in Bethany where his friends was Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Of course, we know that Lazarus was whom he raised from the dead. 
um, Jesus had recently, he had recently raised him from the dead, but this um, did nothing to dissuade his enemies from seeking to kill him. So they know he raised him from the dead. They, they saw that miracle, but it didn't, it didn't stop them from seeking to kill him. And, and that's like when, when an evil mind is made up, um, they're just, you know, unless God changes their heart, they're just going to act out. Um, one particular evening, a dinner was held for Jesus in the house of a man named Simon. Martha, one of Lazarus' sisters, served at the dinner while Lazarus reclined at the table with Jesus. And it talked about how to recline, like they reclined. It was like a lower table close to the floor where they sat on the floor, but their feet stuck out like from the side from out from the table and where and this made um made it very easy for um mary to to anoint jesus's feet but we're going to see that that jesus has some haters and you know of course thinking you know how people think stuff is too expensive nothing is too expensive for jesus you know um so you know we had the haters in the crowd and we know that the main one was judas who was going to betray him and we knew he wasn't Jesus' friend anyway even though Jesus called him his friend he wasn't loyal to Jesus and so of course he you know he had a problem with what with what Mary did Mary the other sister of Lazarus came to him carrying a container of pure nard it anoint it amounted to about a half a liter and was very expensive but Mary did not think anything too expensive to give Jesus and that's awesome you know we shouldn't think too much to give anything for our Lord and Savior. And our life is the main thing that we need to give to Jesus. Um, nothing is too expensive. Nothing is too um, extravagant to give God. And the most important thing that we can give him is our life. He gave us his life. And so we can offer our life as a sacrifice. And to worship him and serve him. As a you know a, a good believer should. Um. Mary poured the ointment on Jesus' feet and also anointed his head. She also wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the aroma of perfume. This was the sweet fragrance of worship. Worship would not be denied. Um, so we're going to go to worship. So this is what she, she did the first um, three. Let me go back and read the scriptures. The first three, um, the first three verses. First three verses. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany. And this is talking about where, where Lazarus was, the one who was raised from the dead. And they made the supper for him, Martha served. And Mary was the one who um, had the ointment. And she um, wiped his feet. And she, she wiped his, his, you know, she anointed his feet. And also his head with the, um, with the ointment. So now we're going to go to... Um, verses 4 through 8 and it's talked talk about the duplicitous um, the duplicitous objection and of course here's where we see the haters then saith one of his um, disciples Judas Iscariot Simon's son which should betray him why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor this he said not that he cared for the poor but because he was a thief he and and a, and had a bag and bear what was put therein. Then said Jesus, "Let her alone. Against the day of my burying, has she kept this? For the poor always you have with you. Me ye have not always." So Jesus um, was going to set him straight and let him know. Let leave her alone. What she's doing is fine. Um, so now we're going to get to. Um, we're going to go to the worship that will not be denied. Not everyone was happy about what Mary was doing. Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve disciples, um, was the one who would soon betray Jesus. He objected to Mary's selfless act. What she did was selfless. But, of course, he objected to it. Um, that was her selfless act of worship to Jesus. But, of course, Judas the betrayer, he objected to it. Um complaining that the ointment could have been sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. Yeah, right, like he really cared about the poor. One denarii was equal to one day's wages, so 300 denarii's amount to about a side, pretty, pretty good amount. Judas had no concern for the poor. However, his interest ended with him, with himself. John points out that he had um, 
charge of the disciples' money and would help it and help himself to it. So he was a thief anyway. So he had a problem with it because um, he was a thief. You know, a thief don't want nobody to do anything. He probably wanted the money for himself. One, you know. Anyway, he's like, we could have did something with that. We could have made some money off of that. He was the treasurer of the group, and he proved to be a crook. Jesus' rebuke, he rebuked Judas by telling him to leave Mary alone. Leave her alone. She saved this gift for the time of his burial and had given what she had to worship him. There would be plenty of opportunities to help the poor, but Jesus would not be with them much longer. He was born to save his people from their sins, and to do that, to do that, he must die. And it was something else that I wanted to read here. Um, let me see if I can find it. Well, I can't find it, but okay. But it was just pretty much talking about um, Jesus being the gift to the world and um, the sacrifice that he gave. He didn't come to, um, you know, make, you know, people popular. He didn't come, he didn't come for pop popularity, but what he did come for was to die and to save us from our sins. That's the best gift that anybody can get is salvation. Because remember, we're going to spend eternity somewhere, one or two places. And I know a lot of people don't believe in hell, um, but hell is real. And, um, either you accept Christ or you don't. It's your choice. But um, I just, you know, plead to you that you would accept Jesus. Accept this gift that God has given us. And, and, and Christmas is just a reminder that Jesus was born for the purpose of saving the world. And we know that we fast forward forwarded to John chapter 12, which was talking about, um, you know, it's, it's like pretty close to his death. And we know that the purpose he came for. So in this lesson, while we're celebrating the Christmas season, we're celebrating his birth, the birth of Christ. And then we fast forward and then we um, will move forward to um, getting close to his death. So as we go through this season, let's continue to um, be faithful. Let's consider to be honorable men and women of God. Let's remember that Jesus is the reason for the season. And as we, you know, love each other and give to one another, let's remember the best gift that we can give to God is our life. That's the best gift we can give him. So let's give God our life. Let's be the sacrifices, you know, present your body as a living sacrifice. We are to be a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God. He gave us his best. So let's give God our life. Let's be witnesses for him. Let's not be haters and not wanting what's best because of course judas was a hater we need to be um worshipers of god and um obedient to his word so uh, hopefully you know we know i know a lot of times we know these lessons and they seem um you know like something you might not want to hear we know about the birth of christ we know that mary was a spouse to joseph we know that um, she was pregnant and she wasn't pregnant by Joseph. We know that he wanted to, um, of course he was hurt and he wanted to divorce her, but he wasn't going to do it publicly. He was going to do it privately. But then of course, God shows up on time, all time, all the time. And so in your life, as you go through life, remember God shows up on time, all the time, as he did here, which, which let Joseph continue to be that. Um, God honoring man that he was, he didn't do anything, you know, but he thought on these things. So he didn't move quickly anyway, but thank God for the Holy spirit. Thank God for the, that the Holy spirit teaches us. And like, and then we move, um, now this lesson is about two Marys, um, Mary who sacrificed her life and, and became the mother of Jesus. And then we have the other Mary, um, Lazarus sister who sacrificed the expensive, um anointing oil for her lord and so let us be set let us sacrifice for jesus let us give up um give up things that we know we shouldn't do let's let's give jesus more time sometimes we'll we'll get caught up in the day and or in the time you know we might even get caught up in the christmas season shopping for everybody else but let's think about what we can give jesus what can i give jesus 
He gave me his all. He gave me his life. God gave us his, the perfect gift. So as we celebrate the perfect gift at Christmas time, so this is just a perfect time. It's a perfect witnessing moment. If you know someone out there that don't know Jesus as their Savior, Savior, use the Christmas time to witness as to who Jesus is and why he came. He came to die for our sins, the sins of the whole world. Not everyone will accept him, but he died for everyone. And that's the best gift, the perfect gift that we can get. And that was through Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for giving us the perfect gift. So I pray that you all have a Merry Christmas. God bless.